Hi there, Brad, W0VHA here. Don't normally do this, don't normally do video rants, but this is bugging the hell out of me for the past week, and I just have to rant about it. Uh, forgive the video work here, I'm working without a tripod and by myself today. Okay, here's the deal. What we have here are two Raspberry Pi computers, the little ARM development machines. Really cool, nice things. There's a couple of plates for it. There's a second one. Now what we've got here, uh, this one here is a, uh, teens it's called a Teensy Pi, TNC-PI. This is a terminal node controller. Basically it's a radio modem. Connect your two-way radio to it, you can send packet. LCD plate with buttons, this is from Adafruit. And then we got another Pi here. And then we've got a Pi plate prototyping board from Adafruit. Actually, now that I think about it, I think even the uh, Raspberry Pis came from Adafruit. Okay, now here's the problem. You interface these plates by stacking them on top of each other. Take one and you stack it on top of the pie, and then you take another one and stack it on top of that. Rather nice... Uh, nice uh, design... Nice thought, but the design just really not so much and I'll show you what I mean here with the pie plate it's really not that difficult take the plate I'm doing this left-handed and my left hand has got the IQ of a brick and you just push it down onto this GPIO connector okay the little foot on top of the on the on the board itself on the plate Okay, let's see if I can get in there. Yep. Yeah. And that little rubber foot sits on top of the Ethernet connector. Just for one thing to keep it short from shorting out and to give it a little bit of st stability. Now you can still, you can do that. And it, it rocks a bit. And just, not the greatest design in the world, but it works. Now this one here, I have in this little plastic case. There's another part that goes on top of this you can snap it together and it's a fully enclosed case. Now I'm not using that because I want to put these on here. Let's see if I can do this one-handed without seeing what I'm doing. Okay, now that one's bad enough. You can see, let's see if I can get in there. You can see the term, the contacts are actually sitting on top of the USB connectors and the Ethernet connector. It's probably not actually touching the Ethernet connector, but it is sitting on top of the USB connector. I had to put tape on top of the USB connector, several layers of tape, to keep that from shorting out against this grounded USB connector. All right, now there's a little screw that goes in there, right there in that hole gives it a little bit of stability uh, I don't know how Dave from EEV blog does this I watch him do it all the time and it drives me nuts that he seems to be able to do this all one-handed or well, either that or he's got a really good tripod so there we got that secured down now it doesn't flex okay that's all well and good Still, I don't like the fact that it sits on the USB connector like that, so I had to deal with that. Now, here's where it became a major issue today. I got this LCD plate. A little I2C uh, driver. Or I2C driven LCD plate with some buttons. What I wanted to do is put it on here. Okay. Now, one... It just doesn't, it doesn't fit. It's too, the connector is just tear, a hair too tall. It's got really nothing to sit on. Yeah. I don't know, it just, it looks, it looks dodgy. Prone to shorts. I don't like it. Now why I can't, what I can't understand with the Raspberry Pi Foundation to begin with, because of course, you know, the, the Raspberry Pi is the base of this thing. Would it be that difficult to say in the corners here, make the board maybe just, you know, a half an inch bigger 
Thank you. You're, tra you're, you're, already, you're talking about a computer the size of a pack of cards. Make the board a half an inch bigger and put, say, like four pins, you know, a four pin header in a square pattern. Boom, boom. On each corner. Stack the module, your plate, on those that get, you know, make it tall enough to get above the connectors. Boom, drop your plate down onto it. It sits level no matter what. Maybe you can even define how tall a plate can be. You know, it can only be three eighths or uh, three quarters of an inch high. The connectors have to be this high. You know, make it make a standard for plates to attach, so they don't end up all dodgy like that. I mean, give it some give it some support. You could even, I mean, you've got your uh, ground and power planes inside the board. You could even bring your 3.3 volt and 5 volt power and ground up through those pins. So they don't have to be support only. You could you could provide power through them. And just make the thing more stable, easier to work with, less likely you're going to short something out. And if you're going to if you're going to, you know, now we've got 3D printers, if you're going to make an enclosure for like say I wanted to make a custom enclosure for this teensy pie with this display on it I'm gonna have a hell of a time doing it because the plates don't sit level I'm gonna have to put supports in my enclosure somehow to hold those boards steady I just I don't like it and I'd be willing to pay a bit extra for my pie and uh, pie plates if I knew they would go together and stay together properly. Like I said, I don't normally video rant, but had to. <laughs> As, and again, as for this one here, not too bad. Wouldn't mind seeing something there. But, yeah, and see, I can, I can rock it back and forth, but... I mean that's the only that's the only support whatsoever is that GPIO header. Enough of that. Keep rocking out. 73